All right, NFL playoffs, divisional round coming up this weekend. Home teams favored by three plus points in the divisional round are 42 and 18 straight up since 2002. But however, they're only 25 and 35 against the spread in that same time. To kick things off Saturday, Minnesota plus seven on the road at San Fran. Minnesota, the number five defense, held opponents in 18.9 points per game. Second best red zone D. San Fran on the flip side is the 21st ranked offense in the red zone this year. So it should be interesting battle there. Defensive end Nick Bosa for San Fran. Second best win rate versus two blockers for a defensive end winning 22% of the time. The only player better was J.J. Watt and I believe his number was 29. I didn't write it down but it was like six, seven points higher. Just unbelievable the way J.J. Watt plays. This is Garoppolo's first playoff start. San Fran, all three losses this year were in the final seconds or the final drives of the game. So they are all coming down to the end. The D-line for San Fran gets D Ford back and linebacker Kwan Alexander. Huge, huge, huge deal, especially with Alexander coming back. He should be able to take away some of that passing game from Cook. Uh, take away some of the Cook's receiving yards anyways. Should be able to help out with that in a big way. Good news for San Fran. Kittle and the secondary are healthy, or at least as healthy as you can be heading into the playoffs at this time of year. Thielen, he ended up running into a player getting stitches in his ankle on, was that Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday? I, I want to say it's Friday morning right now. Um... So you know how healthy is he going to be? The underdog is five and two against the spread in this head-to-head -head matchup. The home team is five and two against the spread in this head-to-head -head matchup. Two conflicting numbers. San Fran is the home team that favors them. The second number, and the underdog is Minnesota, so that number favors them. So we will see what happens. Minnesota is one and five against the spread after a straight-up win, which they straight up won last week as underdogs in New Orleans in a. Really fun game to watch. I expect this to be one of the better games of the weekend. I like San Fran to win and Minnesota to cover the number. Tennessee Titans took out New England in the wild card round. They're in Baltimore to face the number one seeded Baltimore Ravens. Ravens are 10 point home favorites. Tennessee gave up a 104.9 passer rating when opposing QBs targeted the tight ends. Two thirds of their passes completed that works out too. And on the flip side, Lamar Jackson completed 69% of his passes to his tight ends. Tight end Mark Andrews was second to George Kittle for yards per route run production this year, but of all tight ends in the NFL. And Lamar's numbers 111 passer rating, 13 TDs to four interceptions when he targeted his tight ends this year. Baltimore's D is ranked in the top six in almost every single statistical category. Baltimore is eight and 12 against the spread when favored by seven plus points. That applies to today's game. Baltimore is 3,296 rushing yards, the most in NFL history by a team, topping the 1978 Patriots mark of 3,165 rushing yards. Tennessee has a ground game of their own with Derrick Henry, the leading rusher in the NFL this year. Tannenhill, he led the NFL in QBR this season. Baltimore Jackson led league with 36 touchdown passes to go with all the rushing QB rushing records he broke. He was top five in rushing yards total by any player in the NFL this season. If memory serves me right, Tennessee one three and one against the spread versus Baltimore. Tennessee five and zero against the spread in last five road games overall. Uh, versus teams with winning records, that is Tennessee. 5-0 against spread in their world games. Tennessee 4-0 against the spread in their last four road games overall. Unlike Baltimore once again in this game, but both teams like to run that. Tells me the number's not going to be too, too high. Tannenhill, even if Baltimore jumps out to an early lead, which I expect they will, I think Tannenhill and Henry will be able to combine and get some garbage time points to get them within the 10 point number. I like Baltimore to win this game, Tennessee to cover the spread. Game number three, Sunday, 
Houston won 31-24 in Kansas City in October. Houston on the road at Kansas City. Kansas City 9.5 point home favorites. Houston has the worst red zone D. Gave up 71% points on 71% of drives inside the red zone. Their O-line has question marks on the flip side of the ball. Kansas City thinking revenge. They're the healthiest they've been all year. All their players are returning from injury. The road team is 6-1 against the spread verse. Houston is 0-3-1 against spread following and against the spread win, which happened last week. Running backs McCoy, Williams, Thompson. Then you got Mahomes, Kelsey, Hill. So many weapons on Kansas City's offense. It's unbelievable. 25 degrees in Kansas City for game time. 34-16. Houston got trounced the last time the weather was below 40 degrees. That could be a factor. Andy Reid is 18-3 and three straight up following a bye weekend. The Chiefs had last weekend off, obviously, as they were at number two seed in the AFC. I like Kansas City to win this game, and I actually like Kansas City to cover the number this time. I think they will be able to roll through, and I think they are the biggest threat to the Baltimore Ravens in the playoffs. Game number four, Seattle, four and a half point road dogs to Green Bay. Injuries, I think, are going to catch up to Seattle this week. They barely scraped by Philadelphia last week, who was injury riddled. Seattle is the next, has the second most injuries next to Philadelphia out of these playoff teams. And I don't know if Russell Wilson will be able to get it done. They only had a plus seven point differential. Is that gritty? Is that lucky? Or is it, like I said initially, Russell Wilson being able to do enough and keep Seattle in games and keep winning games for them? Aaron Jones, control the clock. Keep Wilson off the field as much as possible. He led the league with 16 rushing touchdowns. Seattle's 26th ranked run D. That could be big issues for them. Aaron Rodgers will just have to manage the game, keep Jones involved, a little bit of play action, and that should be enough to take advantage. And on the flip side, Cesaria Smith, Creston Smith, Kenny Clark, they should be able to pressure Wilson. He was sacked a total of 49 times, I want to say. I thought I wrote it down. Apparently I didn't. But I know he was sank, sacked a league worst 48 or 49 times on the year. So again, an old offensive line issues with both the road teams on Sunday, Houston and Seattle. Seattle is 8-1 on the road straight up this year. 6-2-1 against the spread on the road this year. Green Bay 7-1 at home straight up and 5-3 and against the spread at home this year. The home team has won eight straight games head-to-head -head in this series. 6-1-1 one one against the spread head-to-head. -head. Wilson was sacked. Yep, yeah, there it is. 48 times. O-line issues. Backup center for Seattle is huge. As you saw, saw in the Eagles game, if it wasn't for Wilson's escape ability and able to run like the 45-yard run he pulled off or whatever when it looked like he was dead in the water, uh, the backup center for S Seattle is going to be huge, 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 especially with that pass rush that I mentioned of the earlier from Green Bay. The home team is 3-0-1 against the spread in this head-to-head -head matchup. Seattle is 0-5-1 in Green Bay straight up. Seattle is 0-4-1 versus Green Bay in the last five. So those are the numbers for that game. I like Green Bay to win this game and cover. I think Seattle's luck will run out because of injuries mainly. Not so much that they're not a talented or good team. And Russell Wilson, the first half of the year, he was the MVP in the NFL. Let's not forget that. So it wouldn't surprise me if almost any team won. The only surprise for me would be if Baltimore got upset by Tennessee. So you guys play them numbers how you want. Those are my picks. I use Bet365 for all my gambling. Good luck and peace.